as we gather this morning, we remember in the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Michigan that we acknowledge the sacred land where we work, live, teach, learn, and build community. This land is the territory of the Anishinaabe people. We recognize the repeated violations of sovereignty, territory, and water perpetrated by European and other settlers that have impacted the original inhabitants of this land. We extend our respect to citizens of these First Nations people who live here and their ancestors who have lived here for over 500 generations and to all Indigenous people. We also know that this acknowledgement is insufficient. It does not undo the harm that has been done and continues to be perpetrated now against Indigenous people, their land, air, and water. Shift the beloved 
that what I can I give give my heart yet what I can I A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Today, we are observing uh, the Feast of the Holy Name, which marks the occasion that Mary and Joseph would have taken the infant Jesus to the temple for the observation of the Jewish religious rites that accompany the naming of a child. Now, it should probably be noted here that through the various pronouncements and greetings uh, that are recorded in, in the book of Luke, there's actually quite a lot of names assigned to Jesus within the first two chapters of Luke. Mary is told earlier that, uh, that this, this child should be called Jesus, and she's also told that he'll be called the Son of the Most High and the Son of God. Zechariah names Jesus as a mighty Savior and Lord, and through the visitation to the shepherds by an angelic host, Jesus is also named as Messiah and Lord. And it's in the context of these extraordinary names that the child of Mary is given another name, the slightly more conventional name of Jesus, which is the English language adoption of the Latin form of the Hebrew name Yeshua, which is based on the Hebrew word for deliverance and means something along these lines, God will save us. And now that we've gotten part of the meanings and some of the backgrounds out of the way, we can ponder the implications of this passage and this feast for us as we hear again the pronouncement of the angels and encounter the Holy Family and the events of the first days of Jesus' earthly life. The language in this passage that I've been pondering this week is the double movement of making known. First, God sends angels to the shepherds and causes them to know about this Messiah and Lord, Jesus, who is waiting for them in the nearby town of Bethlehem. There is, in, in this circumstance, a subtle echo of the creation narrative, where it is the Spirit of God hovering over the waters and causing something new to be brought about on earth. This birth is a time of new creation, of recreation. Another instance where God intervenes and delivers goodness to the people of earth. And then these shepherds join with God in making known this new creation, this event where the Messiah and Lord is made present among God's people. The shepherds go and they see the child and they inform Joseph and Mary of the events that have taken place. And what's interesting in this action is the way in which humanity is partnered with God to make known what God is doing in the world. And it's this shared spreading of the word that gives this new creation its power. 
God is not acting alone in the heavens, creating planets and stars, earth, vegetation, animals, and people. Rather, God is at work in and with and through this initial creation for the purpose of making something new and wonderful. And the name that is given to this newness is Jesus. God will save us. And what we find in this passage is that God will save us with our wondering help as we hear the good news in fields or in towns, wherever we may be, and as we go to share what has been made known to us. We become a part of the language and action and substance of creation, and that means that we're offered the opportunity to responsibly engage the world by sharing with it the very good things of God. There's something else to note in this passage of naming and making things known, and it is that when the word comes back to Mary, she treasures these words and ponders what has been made known to her in her heart. There's a significant lesson for us here since this act of pondering reveals to us that simply knowing something can only take us so far. Christianity has been known from time to time as a learned religion since so much of our history and theology is grounded in critical argumentation and lengthy commentaries and other works that rely on highly sophisticated reasoning about what we can know of our God and how we can know it, what it means for us. And all of that is well and good. I've, I've certainly done my own work and I have all my books. I deeply appreciate some of these arguments. and No doubt many of you could say the same. And yet, at the heart of our faith is not what we know, but our ability to rest with our knowledge, to ponder it in our hearts, and to see through it to the revelation of the glory of God as it is made present upon the earth and within our souls. In a sense, the significance of a name is that it takes us beyond knowledge into the realm of experience and feeling. If we're lucky enough to have a good relationship with our parents, and, and I count myself amongst that, uh, uh, that luck, then the name that we have for them, mom or dad, it does more than describe a biological, knowable relationship. Mom is the word that I have for the person who sat up with me that one night when I was three years old and sick. It's the word for the person who would come home from a winter meeting and who immediately would come in to give me hugs after I was in bed so I could still smell the cold air on her coat. It's the word that conveys good food and a welcome table. Dad is the word that I have for laughter and joy and work and compassion and insight. And the point of these examples is that the name is more than the thing itself. The name points us to a deeper substance of reality that reveals to us more than we could possibly know, that reveals to us more than mere biology, that reveals what is actually love and care and deep understanding. And that's what the naming of Jesus offers us, an insight beyond the basic human name that's given to this person, the substance of God who comes to save us, who comes to live with God's people, the God who works in partnership with creation, the God who makes all things new through the birth of a child in the backwater of empire, whose appearance is proclaimed only to a few poor shepherds and lately to ourselves. All of this and more is uncontained within the name of Jesus, which is beyond limit and possibility. It's something that reveals to us the nature of God. As we begin a new year, we might do well to take stock of what has been made known to us so that we might treasure these words in our own hearts, ponder them, and come to understand that God's creation is ongoing. God's sending is always new, and that we are called to join with shepherds and sinners in proclaiming the good news to all creation. 
And in this pondering and proclamation, we may live into the rich meaning of our own names, another name, that name of Christian, which does not signify a religious sect or knowledge-based belief system so much as it indicates a people whose lives have been so thoroughly changed by what we treasure and ponder that to call us only by our given names is not enough, for we indicate by our actions that we are imitators of Christ and the recipients and heralds of the new creation of God. And in this way, we are made participants in the story that began thousands of years ago and continues to unfold here among us, the people of God, to whom salvation has come. gift of all is that baby Jesus crawled out of the manger and lived a life like me and laid it down to set us free. The greatest gift of all is that baby Jesus crawled out of the manger and lived a life like me and laid it down to set us free. Like me, God, and laid it down to set us free. 